Okay, number six. Searching for a tree item. Okay, now, they'll always expect you to do special cases when you're doing these searches. So it's really important that you check that you've actually got a tree at your root. So if you're giving a pointer to a tree, your root value, if it is null, then stop the searching. Okay, so in this little search, and again, I've done this recursively, you can see that is my first, that is my stopping condition. Okay, otherwise what I do is I'd visit bits of the tree. Now you can do this iteratively, it doesn't matter, um, as long as the logic's the same. So all we do is we examine, say, right, okay, let's say we're looking for, oh, I don't know, nine. Okay, the number nine. Let's, I'll just write that down so I remember, because I'll forget. Right, the number nine. Right, so we look at running this with root. Okay, so we're going to say search. Oh, it's not very easy writing with the mouse, they're rubbish. I wish I had my trackball down here. Oh, I forgot. So I'm going to give it the root, which is pointing at the 40, and I'm going to search for 9. So they're my two arguments. Okay, so first step, okay, we haven't got a null value, we've got a thing. So we go into the next if, we say, right, is this the date we're looking for? 40 isn't 9, so <coughs> uh, that's not going to happen. Okay, so we can't say output found. So we're going to go on to the else part. Now, basically we're implementing binary search for this linked list structure. Okay, so it's double linked list. So we need to discard half the tree. So if the tree was balanced, this would be an equivalent search method that you would have with binary search in a sequential list. Okay, assuming your tree is balanced, but obviously that's not realistic most of the time. But anyway, we haven't found the date we're looking, so we're going into this else and we're saying, okay, is the item we're looking for, 9, is that less than the data at the current node? Yes, it is. So we're going to basically discard this part of the tree, because all these numbers are bigger than 40. It's just like the binary search. Okay. So we move down and follow the left branch. Okay, and we recurse. So we run this search subroutine again. Right, we have got a node. Okay. So we can move into this test part. Seven isn't the number we're looking for. Okay. Nine is not less than the node data, which is seven. So we're going to try this. So we're going to try and follow a right branch. So we recurse with that. Oh, I've put left there. I made a mistake. That. Oh dear, never spotted that when I was writing it. Um... Scribble that out. That should say right. I'll change it on the document, but for now I'll just put node.write. Now that looks like node.site actually. Okay, so we follow the right branch. So when we get to here, that is actually an empty node. So that was pointing at null. Okay, so we stop and we can say, okay, it doesn't exist. And then all the recursion rolls back on this. And that's that's essentially, so it's basically a tree structured version of binary search. Because the, we've got a binary tree, it's automatically a binary search. But it'll never be as efficient in general as a binary search of a sequential list because of tree balancing, because this tree is not balanced. There's more items in this right hand side than there is in the left hand side. And the left hand side is sequential. So it goes 40, 7, 2. There's no other branches. Alright, so it's not the most mega uh, search method once a tree gets done balanced. I mean, in the worst case, it can turn into a sequential search if you've got a completely unbalanced tree. So you've got a tree that's just a straight, no no right branches. So if it's purely left branches or purely right branches then you're going to have trouble doing binary search. Okay, I'll fix that right there.